Hello everyone and welcome to LEGO Star Wars Hot Takes episode 10. As always, if you have any hot takes or controversial opinions about LEGO Star Wars that you want me to discuss in next week's video, make sure to go ahead and leave them in the comments below. But without further ado, hopping right into it, starting off with Oscar Sintra. He says, hot take, I think the lightsaber hilts can be oriented either way and they're good and accurate. Like for Obi-Wan's, his lightsaber is bigger at the bottom than the top. Now for me and probably most people, orientating it to where the wider part is on top is typically the most common and best way to do it. Just because that's one, how the instructions tell you to do it and two, because that just makes it most accurate for most characters' lightsabers in Star Wars. Although in the end, you obviously can do it however you want. Me personally, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people, like putting the wider part on top, and some people would probably even get offended if you put the wider part on the bottom. God Emperor says, Hot take, the solo Imperial Convoy train set is massively underrated, but there's no way LEGO could have made the actual two trains with the track. I mean, how could you display that? It has great figures, a great build that plays well and displays well. Expectations were set way too high, and so was the price. Now, I do agree that the set does have amazing figures, and I think most people agree with that. Although the reason I don't like the build is just because, well, it's it's boring, and like you mentioned, it is pretty overpriced. I think the least they could have done is made the train sections a little bit bigger, just maybe a few studs wider, not even longer, just a few studs wider. And I mean, yeah, there would be no way to do the track without making this set super expensive because that would add a lot of extra pieces. Although the way they executed just doing the train itself was not that good in my opinion. Again, it just should have been bigger and maybe had some more detail. Now for the mini figures, I get that LEGO really wanted to make those range troopers, and obviously on paper, this would be the best option for a set for those minifigures to go into, although there was just really not a good way to pull it off without making it super expensive by adding a track or just kind of dumbing it down and making it look kind of boring, which is what they did. Instead, I think those range troopers would have fit best in the AT Hauler set. Odd Operator says, Hot take, LEGO should make a battle pack that has four different phase two clone factions, like the 327th, the Galactic Marines, the Wolfpack Troopers, and the 41st Elite. This way, you could build four different factions at once. Now, this does sound cool, but I don't think this is a good idea, especially for army building. Basically, the point of army building with battle packs is to get multiples of the same figure to build an army for a cheap price. But if you're getting four different clone troopers and you're trying to build an army of each of them, theoretically you're paying $20 for one figure and that is just not a good deal. So therefore, let's say you want 30 327th troopers, you're going to have to buy 30 of those battle packs. Instead, you could just have a 327th battle pack that has three 327th troopers and then maybe an officer to lead them and you'll only have to buy 10. So really, that is just awful value for building an army. It's better to just have each clone battle pack strictly based on one legion or battalion or a corpse or whatever. Although there are times when a battle pack does have multiple different unique characters to fit into a battle, for instance like some of the rebel trooper battle packs, or most recently the newest Mandalorian battle pack, although you can't really have a battle pack like that with clone troopers, because if you're going to have a clone trooper battle pack, I mean it has to be for army building, there's going to have to be multiple copies of the same trooper in there. Just a random LEGO fan says, hot take printed cloth pieces are better and the helmet holes allow for more playability. Now first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and say printed cloth pieces are not better at all. Especially only newest Commander Fox, it just does not look good. And I've said this many times, but the printed waist cape just does not even look like a waist cape. At a fast glance, it just looks like extra detail on the legs, which just looks out of place. And I strongly stand by the idea that if LEGO is not going to include physical waist capes, just leave the legs normal. It would make it where people can add waist capes on if they want to, and if you don't add a physical waist cape on, it won't look super out of place like a printed one does. And for the helmet holes, yes, helmet holes are absolutely amazing for captains and commanders and specialized troopers. Although for your normal trooper that is not going to have any helmet attachments. There does not need to be any helmet holes. At O-03085 says, Hot take, I don't get why people hate the 2018 Jedi Battle Pack so much. Honestly, I find it kind of cool how there are two Jedi and two clones. Now I'm just going to go ahead and speak for why I don't like the Battle Pack. I'd like to assume I'm speaking for a lot of other people as well, but for me, the main reason I don't like it is just there was so much wasted potential in this Battle Pack. The year was 2018 and we had not gotten any plain phase one white clone troopers since 2013. And it was really exciting to hear that we were going to be getting them in a battle pack. Although for some reason, instead of LEGO giving us a full-on phase one clone trooper battle pack, they threw in Kiati Mundi and Bera Safi for no reason. If this set would have included three plain phase one clone troopers and then a phase one clone pilot, it probably would have been one of the greatest battle packs of all time. Like I'm talking a top five or a top three battle pack of all time, but instead they really ruined it with these two Jedi. And honestly, I think it's probably one of the biggest missed opportunities LEGO has ever had. They really had the opportunity to make a battle pack that would most definitely rival the 2009 Clone Walker battle pack and most likely be better than it. But in the end, instead of four clone troopers, they gave us two and then two Jedi. They didn't want to include four clone troopers. The least they could have done was make it a versus battle pack and included droids. But no, they took an extra step even further down and included two named Jedi. A Johnny the Insani, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Anyways, he says, hot take, Poe Dameron's first X-Wing is better than any of Luke's X-Wings. Now, as much as I know you guys know I dislike the sequels, I do just say one really cool thing that came from 
from them was the colored X-Wings. I do have to say it was pretty lazy that Disney did not come up with new vehicle designs, although the colored X-Wings did look really cool, especially Poe Dameron's black and orange X-Wing, and then the other X-Wing that was like white and orange, and there, I think there was one that was gray and blue. They all just looked so cool and vibrant to me, and it was definitely a nice breath of fresh air from the typical all gray or all white Lego Star Wars sets we get. So as much as I hate the sequels, I do have to say the colored X-Wings do look better than the original white ones, at least in Lego form. Spielkind says, hot take the UCS Imperial Shuttle is overrated. Other more detailed sets like the Slave One or the Millennium Falcon simply look better. Now honestly, just no. Those other sets might be more detailed, but the UCS Imperial Shuttle just looks way more intimidating. It is pretty much the definition of a perfect display piece, and honestly, it doesn't even need much more detail. The Imperial Shuttle in Star Wars itself is a pretty sleek design with large white wings and a pretty sleek white cockpit, and LEGO represented that perfectly with this set. There doesn't need to be a whole lot of battle damage or greebling like there would be on a Star Destroyer or maybe an X-Wing. It just needs to be big and intimidating, and LEGO did that perfectly here. I mean, the Imperial Shuttle really is a staple of the Empire and really shows how uniform and intimidating they can be, with it being very sleek and very mean looking, and LEGO just captured that perfectly. The other sets might have more detail, but in this case, detail doesn't matter because the Imperial Shuttle just looks better on display. Lucas Diaz Lehman says, Hot take, the golden age of LEGO Star Wars really wasn't that good. LEGO Star Wars fans only considered the 2008-2014 era good because of the quantity of the Clone Wars sets. They focus too much on the Clone Wars and label a year good or bad depending on how many Clone Wars sets there are. Most of them are outdated and could be made better, but LEGO doesn't. Now, I do agree on the part where you said LEGO fans only focused on how many Clone Wars sets were released in a year, because a lot of times people do just only care about clone troopers, but there were a lot of other sets that came out in this era that were also really good as well. And still, most of the sets that did have clone troopers were also just great sets, as they all had very advanced and iconic models. I can probably count on one hand the number of bad sets that came out in this era that included clone troopers. And since you believe that this era wasn't that good, I'm just going to go through every year and remind you that we really got some of the best LEGO sets ever made during this time. But in 2008, we obviously got sets like the Republic gunship and the Republic ATTE, which might not hold up today, but they are still definitely very good for their time and they're very iconic. And also in 2008, we got the very iconic Death Star, which is probably the most popular LEGO Star Wars set ever made. In 2009, we got the famous clone battle pack, which is really a staple of what a battle pack should look like. We also, of course, got the Republic dropship with ATOT, which is one of the most timeless LEGO Star Wars sets ever made. And then, of course, everyone's favorite, the Battle of Endor. And then in 2010, we got the best turbo tank LEGOs ever made, as well as the TIE Defender and the Last Arc 170, as well as obviously one of the best UCS sets ever made being the UCS Imperial Shuttle. 2011 was a bit of a weaker year, but we got some great sets like the Republic Frigate and Anakin and Sebulba's Pod Racers. And then in 2012, we got the introduction of the Old Republic sets, as well as sets like Palpatine's Arrest and Jabba's Palace. And then 2013 and 2014 was where LEGO really started to kick it up a notch. In 2013, we obviously got iconic sets like the 501st ATRT and the Z95 Headhunter, as well as obviously the best Republic gunship LEGO has ever produced, along with a very incredible ATT. Another notable set that came out this year is definitely the Ewok Village. And then in 2014, we got the biggest variety of sets, and that is why I personally think it is the best year for LEGO Star Wars. We got a perfect balance of all eras being from the Clone Wars, the Imperial Era. LEGO really gave us the perfect combination of sets this year, with sets like the 212th Battle Pack and the 41st Elite Battle Pack, as well as the ATAP and all the other Episode 3 sets. But we also got a number of Imperial Battle Packs and the last and best playscale Star Destroyer, as well as one of the best playscale ATATs as well. Well, and then of course the beautiful UCS Sandcrawler. Like I said, I think 2014 was the best year of LEGO Star Wars and it really was the forefront of the golden era. So sorry for my little extensive rant, but I had to remind you of why this era was so good. But anyways guys, that is going to do it for this week's video. As always, if you have any hot takes or controversial opinions about LEGO Star Wars that you want me to discuss in next week's video, make sure to go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And if you want to check out more of my videos, you can see them on the end screen right now.